John Evans, who resides in the rustic outback of Alaska, grows giant veggies all right. So big that the Guinness Book of World Records has come a knocking nine times. I have quite a few uh, Guinness World Records uh, and 18 state records in the giant variety. Oh, and uh, over 200 blue ribbons in eight years. Well, this is a uh, stonehead uh, variety cabbage. John estimates this cabbage to be a whopping 35 pounds. How big is that, you ask? Well, it would take 68 grocery store-sized heads to match just one of these gargantuans. This is a leek, a little bit larger than you would normally see. A little larger? That's a freak leek compared to the ones in my garden. So how does John grow humongous vegetables that, believe it or not, aren't stringy and taste delicious? They seem to agree it's the sun. No. That's a myth. Uh, it's a fallacy. They would be growing all these giant vegetables up in Norway and Sweden and Finland. And do you ever hear of anything? No siree, Bob. So I, I rest my case on that one. John claims the secret is not the sun above, but the earth below. Oh, the secret is all in the soil. It's like as if the soil is like this stomach. If you put the right foods into your stomach, you can then become like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what happens with these plants. You don't have to dig very deep to see that John's plants are extremely well nourished. Ah, here we go. Here we are. Now, that's some leak. Hey, John, how about leaking the secret of big veggies? like these Brussels sprouts, which last year grew to be the size of apples. Notice on the leaves themselves, the glossiness of the leaves, th this glossiness is a type of wax. That wax is where the, the plants uh, can actually resist bugs from eating them. Slugs don't seem to like my plants. Um, and aphids, many bugs, they just, uh, they go next door. I get it. Plants that don't have to fight off pests or diseases, like this humongous 46-pound celery, can put their energy into growing bigger. There's enough Swiss chard here uh, for a little meal for a big dinosaur. Um, I would estimate that it is at least over 60, maybe 70 pounds, because I have grown a 70-pounder before. This is a, a big plant. Here we have a zucchini. This is about, ooh, 35 pounds, and you kids out there, if you uh, are fed up with growing some pumpkins, how about growing a nice big zucchini for a change? Sounds great. And in addition to that trick, John says if you maximize the soil's potential, it'll maximize the plant's potential. So how does John feed the soil? Now here is the secret to my success, compost tea. It's a special gourmet recipe John's been working on for years. With just the right combination of compost, micronutrients, and bacteria. A little bit goes a long way. It's the equivalent to about maybe 500 to 1,000 pounds of compost. Essentially, he's turbocharged his compost, and with it, everything else in his garden. What happens in the soil is everything is stimulated with all the microorganisms to such a high point that they will give that plant the maximum food for its production. Well, here we have some carrots. And more food for the soil means bigger, tastier, healthier there we have veggies. That's a pretty nice carrot. These monsters are not just for show, they also make for good eating. Zucchini bread, leek and potato soup, fried zucchini, good soup, zucchini this, good stew, zucchini that, stir fry, zucchini soup. Oh boy, just give me more. You know, there's one more way to tell that John's plants are ultra healthy. It's by their bricks level or the amount of sugar they contain. You see, in the grocery store, most veggies have a bricks level of between, oh, say six and ten, whereas John's measure in at a whopping twenty. Now we're ready to make compost tea. And to do that, you'll need a five-gallon bucket, a diffuser, some air hoses, and an air pump. 
After attaching all those pieces together, drop it in the bucket and turn it on. Look at all those little micro bubbles coming up. The air John is pumping into the water encourages the growth of millions of good or aerobic bacteria. First we need to do is put in a small amount of compost. We will say for this amount, oh, about eight cups of compost. Look at this beautiful compost. Into the bubbling bucket it goes. Now John has his own special blend of ingredients he adds, which contains, among other things, simple sugars. The tea brews for 24 hours. Then John mixes five parts water to one part tea. The reason why it's called tea is because it looks like tea, but it doesn't act like tea. Then he applies the liquid two ways, straight into the soil or on the leaves. Get the foliage nicely wetted down, and this is what will cause a biofilm. This will protect the plant from diseases and insects. Now for John, bigger veggies isn't always the goal, but a bigger bounty is. This is where I'm going to have more fun than you can ever imagine. John's a huge potato fan, and to guarantee a large yield, he sprayed the leaves and soil of each plant. This is one plant now. Believe me, this is one hill, one plant. So how many one potatoes hill. can you get from one plant? Here we come into the mother load. Still going down for the deeper, boys, here, down here. Now you can understand why I have so much fun. I mean, it just never seems to end. Isn't that such a pretty potato? That's it. No more. Here we've got, <laughs> it's got to be about uh, 40 potatoes good 40 potatoes in this plant. Hard to believe 40 potatoes from one plant, but that's the benefit of compost tea, even in Alaska's rugged climate. Growing bigger, healthier, record-breaking veggies is one secret John Evans wants the world to know.